Fun Facts presents the 1953 Packard Balboa. It is a 50s classic car and it was first introduced back in 1953. I am excited. I hope you're excited when I was reading a little bit about the 327 engine that powers this baby. Let's get started now. The 53 Packard general information, some fun facts. When the 1953 Packards were introduced on November 21st, 1952, the Clipper nameplate was back. It was now the base Packard. In a year marked by model expansions, a special Caribbean convertible, convertible was also available, but it was not introduced until mid-year appearing in January 1953, a unique Packard Balboa show car was constructed this year and put on exhibit on August 31, 1953. It was based on the Caribbean using its body but with a reverse sloping fiberglass roof. An air conditioning was released as a $625 option for the four models on July 1st of 1953. The first two air-conditioned cars had it installed in two White House fleet cars on May 19, 1953. The limousine body style was reintroduced on March 14, 1953. The model run production was 89,730 cars. The calendar year sales hit 81,341 vehicles. Packard was rated number 14 amongst automakers with a nice rebound from the Korean War recession. <clears throat> the encouraged, this encouraged the body style redesign that would appear on 1955 vehicles. The retooling cost would be high, but Packard hoped for ever rising sales to cover it. Today I'd like you to consider a couple different scenarios. What if Studebaker reintroduced the Packard in 1962 as a high-priced coupe called the Balboa? Which, as one reader showed me, could have been done easily and inexpensively if someone had tried it. The Balboa name already had some history with Packard. In 1953, it was used on a show car commissioned by Packard President James Nance, essentially a production model, 1953 Caribbean convertible, of only which 750 were produced that year, fitted with a low slung hardtop roof, boasting a canopy style rear window overhang, and an unusual fluted C pillars. The Balboa, also known as Balboa X, caused the sensation when it appeared. Not only was it the sportiest looking Packard in years, but its unique reverse slope rear window actually rolled down into the trunk area to provide fresh air through the cabin. However, for reasons unknown, Packard never offered the Balboa as a production car, which was a shame. Indeed, the Caribbean line itself didn't get a hard top until 1956 on its final year. Since Nance was known to be determined to upgrade Packard's luxury, luxury image, it's puzzling that he didn't at least offer the Balboa on a limited issue basis like the Caribbean. After all, many people prefer hardtops over convertibles. It might even have outsold the Caribbean. A limited run, high-end cars fetch high prices, which could have added more meat to Packard's bottom line. I began to ponder all this time some weeks ago when automotive artist Bob Hoberka sent me a copy of the proposal he came up with for a resurrected Packard Balboa base ingenuously on a restyled for 1962 Studebaker Gran Turismo Hawk. It's a great looking concept 
I was convinced that it would have sold if the company had offered it. Bob's Balboa concept shows how easy it could have been to revive Packard as a sporty hardtop. The only new tooling that was needed was for the hood and grill. The hood could have been done in fiberglass to slash the cost of tooling and the grill might have been framed or farmed out to a outside supplier able to do small runs at reasonable cost. The same shop might have been able to do a split front bumper or Studebaker could have done it themselves. I think you might like the story that I'm reading from on Hemmings.com. I'm going to put a link below the video so that you can continue to read this particular article. And we will continue with some other fun facts in just a moment. Here are some fun facts you just wouldn't know if you didn't hear this on the video. Packard or the Packard Motor Company was an American luxury automobile company located in Detroit, Michigan. The first Packard automobiles were produced in 1899. Come on, 1899? So by 1953, I mean, we've got 150 years of building cars. That's amazing to me. And the last Packards were built in South Bend, Indiana in 1958. Why did they quit? They were around for 150 years. Blows my mind. One of the three P's alongside Peerless Motor Company and Pyrrhus Aero, the company was known for building high quality luxury automobiles before, before World War II. Owning a Packard was considered prestigious and surviving examples are found in museums, car shows, and automobile collections. Packard vehicles featured innovations, including the modern steering wheel, air conditioning in a passenger car, and one of the first production 12-cylinder engines adapted from developing the Liberty L12 engine used during World War I to power warplanes. Holy smokes. During World War II, Packard produced 55,523 units of the two-stage, two-speed supercharger equipped with a 1,650 cubic inch, 27-liter uh, Merlin V12 engines under contract with Rolls-Royce. Packard also made two, the 2,490 cubic inch, 40 liter version of the Liberty L12 V12 engine. This update engine powered United States Navy PT boats. Holy smokes. After Second World War, Packard struggled to survive as an independent automaker against domestic big three, General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler. Packard merged with Studebaker in 53 and formed the Studebaker Packer Corporation. This merger was intended to be temporary while an eventual merger with American Motors, AMC, was planned. Disagreements among the firm executives thwarted the consolidation of AMC, so Studebaker Packard remained a separate company. The Packard brand was phased out in 1959 after two years of declining sales of the Studebaker built 1957 and 1958 model year Packards. Well, I just was reading from the Wikipedia and I will leave a link below the video for that. If you found yourself this far into the video, we'd certainly like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch our video. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe. 
because we'll be doing many more cars in the 50s and 60s. We'll be doing the muscle cars, we'll be doing sports cars, hybrid cars, supercars, autoramas, hot rods, a little bit of everything for everybody. So always thank you. We look forward to seeing you when we upload our next video. And always, always, always take good care. Thank you.